Hello and welcome back to OT the podcast. We're here, we're here to talk about watches, time, and how to spend it. My name's Felix Schultz. And I'm Andy Green. I almost didn't uh, wear here, we're queer, but then I, I thought, thought oh, I know. In my head, I'm like, is, he, is this where it's going today? Um, no, nah, we'll save that for Friday. <laughs> How you going? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. It's, um, uh, you know, Black Friday has, has, has been a thing. Have you been uh, hitting the shops? Straight into it, mate. Uh, oh, yeah, quick I am. Um, question, quick question. Have you been hitting the virtual shops or the physical shops? Nah, physical shops, physical shops. I was just out there. Um, I was out there yesterday. I did some uh, retail therapy. What did I do? I went to um, Trunk Tailors, who are a uh, well, tailoring shop here in Melbourne. Uh, they got, they got a cool, cool spot on um, Swanson Street, sort of mm. near Collins, mm. for the for the locales. Uh, and yeah, booked in to uh, to get a shirt made next week. So I'm getting a is it in candy, denim boy candy candy pink OT embroidery like team sort no. of um, bowling jackets. No, I wish, but it was um, it was no, no, just like a denim sort of. Can we do bowling jackets? Denim shirt. Well, I'm thinking Gucci can hook us up with those, or at least yeah. some bowling shirts. Oh, you see, I was just thinking like corporate workwear embroidery, but that's that's the difference between you and me. Just splash, splash some money. Um, so yeah, I went to Trunk. Uh, shout out to those guys, yeah. obviously, uh, and then to what's becoming sort of my favourite uh, denim shop in Melbourne as well, called Collection. Um, picked up some, uh, picked up another pair of. Uh, Momotaro jeans. Uh, I was there in a couple of weeks ago, pick up a pair, and I thought, yeah, end of the year. They had a very generous um, 12% off uh, nice. for Black Friday. So, yeah, well, I mean, I, I, it's, it's always a good thing. Like the margins, are, you know, they must be tight if they're, they're not doing yeah. deep discounts. Yeah, yeah. and they're local with small business. Like if you've got to bring in a pair of, you know, jeans that sell for 500 bucks, they probably cost, you know, mm. 250 to, you know, wholesale. So, And I'd rather, you know, buy something sustainable that, that lasts than sort of something. Well, my um, uh, my my online, I've, I've been keeping it online. Uh, uh-huh. What have you done? One of them has been a little less successful. I was considering buying a new fridge. Uh-huh. Um, so that's <laughs> not very glamorous, really, is it? Um, all the listeners cool. will really appreciate that. Thinking about going up to a big four twenty liters. Wow. Double door or oh, mate. Sort of no, one let's see, stack? The, let, we can go. Yeah, we can go into this if you really want. I suspect you don't. Freeze it down the bottom or up the top? That's the big question. Uh, well, <laughs> it's funny you should mention that. Um, <laughs> the main constraint is our width, so we have an availability right. of uh, seven hundred millimeter space, which is somewhat constraining. As I mean, the, the, these days they're, they're either too small or they're bigger than that. That's so. a thin fridge. It's not. Look, it's not thin. It's just not. It's, <laughs> It's just not huge. We have a bit to talk about that. We've got a guest coming on and we've been liking some things. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Who've we got coming on? We've got Dan Tenenbaum, who yeah. the internet knows as Watch Parts Motorcycles. Um, mm. So he's a, he's an entrepreneur and a guy who's been really su- sort of successful in the tech industry. Um, big family man, big watch collector, and got into sort of turning watch parts into art. Started off with motorcycles and then it's evolved into a whole bunch of other things. Yeah, nice. Um, Really love the guy, Canadian. So I think, like by law, you have to be lovely. Eh? Uh, but is, that, is it? I do eh? that right? Eh? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Canada. Um, yes, they're an important market to us, Felix. Uh, so we're going to get him on. But what uh, what have you been liking lately? Well, I got something in the post. Um, Did you? Yeah, it was a bit of a surprise. So I don't know. We've spoken about our old mate Nick before on uh, the podcast. He's a he's a super fan. And he's mm-hmm. he's a guy up in um uh up in a, stationed at Amberley and he flies big uh, military planes, sure. uh, the the refueling ones. And I think he might have he he was all over us when we chatted to um you know old mate who, Nathan Jones, who, yeah, Nathan Jones who dropped out. Yeah, all those guys. So he knows Nathan and he's got a, he's he's got he did some stuff with Bremont, did a squadron watch and stuff. But mm-hmm. he said he just sort of sent me things saying, "Hey, what's your address?" And I said, "Oh, here it is." And then his mate sent me some stickers, um, which was mm. very lovely. Uh, his mate has a business called Retro Pilot. Uh, okay. And they're sort of like, you know, they're, they're sort of like your laptop back sort of stickers or you can put them wherever you want. But they're very, like they're sort of a range of planes and they've got little little catchy taglines. Uh, so I w- I've got one with the, the famous Elvis helicopter that people on the eastern coast of Australia will probably be familiar with, the air crane. And it's a lovely mm-hmm. little sort of decal there, and it says "Air Crane, bring the rain." And there's other ones. I'll have to. I'll get one to, over to you because I reckon that'll be your jam. And yeah, we're gonna have to do what? 
send some stickers back oh, up to uh, It's a sticker chain mail situation. Yeah, so he's yeah. at retro-pilot.com and he's on the ground, but we'll link him up. And, yeah, it was just a nice surprise in my letterbox. What about you, Andy? What have you been up to? Lovely. Well, what have I been liking? Well, we've talked about what I've been up to. What I've been liking is a YouTube clip from everybody's favourite German YouTuber, Ooh. Jenny Ellie. Okay. The title? Okay. Husband surprised me with a new Rolex. Wow. Do you know what the Rolex is? I do, but I don't want to ruin your surprise because you're, you're pretty into this. Candy Pink, 36. Welcome to the club, Jenny Ellie. Yeah. Um, well, he probably saw yours and was like, man, that's a great watch. I'm going to buy it for Jenny Ellie. Well, he's made a great decision. Um, mm. I'm, I'm a, you know, ecstatic to have have Jenny in the club. It's a it's an exclusive club, and Do you have she was one jackets? of the first people. She was one of the first people I told that I was getting that watch, and I we actually had to edit it out of um, that episode. <laughs> You've told so many people you were getting that watch. It's like, nah, I kept it pretty quiet. Oh, did yeah. you? Yeah, mm. I just told you, mate. Mm. Who'd you tell? Um, but yeah, I'll link that up. It's, I'll let you enjoy the, the magic of, you know, Jenny Ellie walking through she, her office uh, and does seeing her, the box. Does her sort and of... She knows, this, she knows what that box is. Like, she knows the size of a Rolex box. There's no mistaking it. Sure, sure, sure. They've probably trademarked those proportions. Mm, probably. Um, but, um, yeah, it's a really do, do, sweet quick, video. Quick, quick take. Is there sort of any analysis of it or is it all uh, just... Yeah, she compares it She compares it to um, one of the other 36 OPs, the previous one. Do you agree with her summary? I agree with everything that Jenny Ellie says. Mm-hmm. She's great. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Felix, let's take a quick break and then we've got to get uh, down on the line. Sure. This week's episode is brought to you by Gucci. And today we're talking about all things Gucci grip. Exactly. We've been spending a little bit of time with a few key grip models. And before we get down to the details, I thought we could use a bit of backstory. The grip was launched in 2019 and was designed by Gucci creative director Alessandro Michele and is very much in keeping with his 70s inspired direction for the brand. The watch is inspired by the early days of skating. The name Grip comes from grip tape used to keep skaters on their boards. Skaters can skate. Exactly, exactly, exactly. The Gucci Grip has grown quickly into a fully fledged family with colours, complications and even collaborations with none other than Mickey Mouse. Mr. Mouse himself. The other really interesting thing about the grip is that it was conceived as a gender-neutral watch. It's sort of a cushion-shaped watch design with a very non-conventional dial display. The first one had a little date at six and two gauge-like displays showing the hours and the minutes. And while there are quite a few options now, they all still have that grip look. It's a really cohesive collection. Quick question, Andy. Do you think the grip is retro or futuristic? An even quicker answer? Both. No, that's a good answer. Andy, you've been rocking the yellow gold 38 millimeter roulette. What is it and what's it like on the wrist? Cool. Well, like all grips, they're genderless watches, thanks to both the size and the design. On this wrist, mine, feels good and the bracelet drapes nicely. At first glance, it looks, you know, really retro because it's got the obvious, you know, vibes from the 70s as intended by, you know, Gucci's creative director. But at the same time, it blends that mechanical digital display powered by the uh, the quartz movement and it feels, you know, futuristic. If I had to describe it, sort of like watching Back to the Future and seeing how, you know, they portrayed the future to be. So I've been wearing it in the 38 millimeter yellow gold PVD case with the roulette wheel. It's a heap of fun to play with. Essentially, there's this roulette wheel uh, with a lovely light blue mother of pearl disc that sort of complements the gold in a really good way, but it's it's powered by a little pusher. You spin it around and click it, uh, click it to spin it around, uh, and it's just fun. It's even borderline addictive to play with. I agree, and I love this thing. The wheel is cool. You spin it, and you can get future, chance, or more if you're lucky. And then there's tenebrae, which means Ooh. darkness. So maybe not that one so much. The Australian price of this one, the 38 millimeter yellow gold PVD roulette, comes in at three thousand one hundred and ninety dollars. You can buy all the grips at Gucci.com. Just plug in Gucci Grip into the search bar. They've got secure checkout and speedy shipping. Of course, if you want to do it in person, you can head to your closest Gucci boutique or authorised dealer and get your hands on the grip. Of course, we'll link everything up in the show notes. But Andy, we've got to get back to it. We do. See you guys. Alrighty, and we are back and we're ready to talk to Mr. Dan Tenenbaum. Nice. Should we get him on the line? Let's get him on the line. 
Buckle up. Here we go, Felix. Mm. Today's guest. He is a uh, he's a really cool guy. He's a tech entrepreneur. He's a family man. He's a big watch collector. Right. He's also an artist who makes huh. all kinds of wonderful creations out of watch parts. And it sort of started with watch parts of motorcycles, and it's come a long way from there. Welcome, Dan Tenenbaum, to OT yeah, Podcast. Thanks for having me, guys. Lovely to meet you, Dan. How's it going? It's going very well. You know, it's been uh, interesting being confined to the house, um, but it's given me a lot of time to work on my artwork and spend time with my family. So uh, definitely interesting times. Yeah, tell, tell us about it. So it's a, this is a hard conversation to start because I want to talk about art, but I want to talk about watches. And for you, I think the art's bigger. So maybe we have the uh, the watch part, the, the watch talk first, and that'll probably lay the groundwork for how you ended up being an artist who uses watch parts. Now, we've we've interviewed you before in the past, many years ago. I know you own some interesting stuff, but what where do watches fit into your life and sort of what are you into? Yeah, so, you know, I come from a very long line of collectors. My grandfather was a collector. My parents are collectors. I mean, like when I was seven, we used to go to like uh, antique places and my parents would give me like $5 and say, meet back here at the front and four hours you know well I, i've been antiquing yeah. my whole life <laughs> but uh, mo- most of my collections end up in drawers right so i visit them every once in a while and my mother started collecting vintage costume jewelry in fact she's she's literally written the book on vintage costume jewelry but when she started collecting it i thought this is such a brilliant idea of collecting right it's a collection you could wear and see and feel so that's what got me into collecting watches. Is is it was a collection for me to see every day and wear and enjoy, rather than just visiting them in a drawer every once in a while. Okay, amazing. And you own sort of a mixture of sort of really modern pieces uh, and sort of independent brands, but also sort of some vintage stuff. Yeah. Do you still sort of have brands like AP and Erverk around? Uh, I, I have my Erverk. Um, I don't have an AP in my uh, my lineup as it stands right now. Uh, my focus of my collection initially was Rolex, uh, vintage Rolex sport models. I just mm-hmm. I just loved the pedigree. I loved everything about it. But at a certain point, they all kind of looked the same, even though they were all amazing. It's like, you know, do I wear my 6538 or my 5508? I mean, they look <laughs> similar enough. That, that, you know, I wanted to kind of broaden my spe- spectrum of the collection and, and really kind of express my personality, you know, and, and you know, with, with guys, you know, we have our, our sunglasses, our eyeglasses, our watches, our cufflinks, our belts and our shoes. Really, that's it, right? Like uh, yeah. as, as accessories. So I, 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 I love the idea of a watch uh, being able to have, you know, fun with it. You know, I think your first watch you get is kind of your serious everyday watch. It's the second, third, fourth, fifth watch that are the fun ones to buy because you could be mm-hmm. a little bit more adventurous, right? So I don't have any real ego in my collection. You know, I have everything from Casios to um, Pateks um, mm. and, and, and whatever's in between. If it, if it somehow speaks to me, if there's something interesting about it, uh, I'll get it, right? Uh, I, I mean, I love wearing a watch. Uh, Dan, you just mentioned something in there about your, your, the first serious watch. What was your? What would you say your first serious watch was? That sort of either was a, yeah. My parents got me a, a Cartier for graduation from college, nice. which I think was my first serious watch, uh, and I loved it. You know, I, I, as time went on, really the um, the bigger watches became a little bit more popular, and I found. That one was a little dainty for my like, liking. And then so my, my first serious watch that I bought for myself was um, a, a Speedmaster, uh, the 321 Movement, uh, which I just, I, I adore. Uh, such a, I think it's a great, I, I, hate, I hesitate to say starter watch because it is uh, a relatively expensive watch, but I, it really started my love for, for kind of that genre of watches. It's a good choice. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I wore the crap out of it, but I felt, uh, I, 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 like at that point, I felt like I needed more, right? And then I started mm. trying to figure out what do you need in a collection, right? Like I felt like you needed a good dive dive watch, you needed a good chrono, you needed a nice dress watch, you needed a good novelty watch. I started kind of making these categories because, um, you know, what once I had 
a great base of my vintage Rolex sport models. Uh, like I said, they just they kind of looked at all the same to me. I mean, I, I hate to say that. You know, there wasn't one reason to wear one over another. Whereas if yeah. you have kind of these buckets of of, of uh, watches, you know, there's a reason why you'd want to kind of wear a, a fancy dress watch just to slip under the cuff nicely or a big clunky crazy watch uh you know if you're going out on the town like i i like having a you know put it matching it with my either my mood or, or where i'm going or my outfit like that's fun for me yeah amazing and so you mentioned a, a rolex 6538 which uh on its own is a very serious serious vintage rolex yeah killer piece it's a killer piece but this one's a pretty got a pretty cool story attached to yeah. it uh which involves some gold bullion I know the yeah. story, but I and and Felix sort of was the uh, was my editor at the time before he was my my business partner. But I'm sure the listeners don't and would absolutely love to hear sort of the the gold bullion watch yeah. story. <laughs> well, my um, my wife was pregnant with um, our twins, which I was convinced were both girls. Uh, mm-hmm. In fact, we didn't even have boys' names picked, right? So, uh, anyways, we go to the hospital and uh, she gives birth. Boom, boom, two boys, right? Yeah. So I think, holy smokes, I, I, I got to mark this occasion and, and get them something to, to mark the, the fact that I've got two boys here. So I decided what I was going to do is I'm going to get two of the most iconic watches of all time, in my, in my view, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll search them out, I'll find them, and I'll present it on their 21st birthday. So uh, as most watch geeks, you know, are obsessed with collecting, I immediately go to my forums, clickety-click, you know, uh, I'm looking for these two watches. I only want the best examples. I've got all the time in the world to try to find them. So I only want pristine, great provenance uh, watches. So one mm-hmm. of the watches uh, was the Rolex 6538. Sean Connery wore that as Dr. No, and as James Bond. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and to me, that's what put Rolex on the map. Like, I think that's what made Rolex Rolex is the fact that, you know, Sean Connery wore it uh, in James Bond. So I wanted that watch. I, I, that was one of the ones I was searching for. And anyways, I got a call from one of my watch dealers in London, Ontario, two hour drive outside the city here. And he said, Dan, you know, I sold a, a watch uh, like that 30 years ago to someone locally here. Should I see if he still has it? So I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, totally. See if he still has it. So uh, he hangs up, calls me back two hours later. And he's like, yeah, Dan, he still has it. So I said, amazing. I go, book a lunch for me and him within the next couple of days. I, I just want to meet with him. He's like, what, lunch? I'm like, just do it. Lunch, meet him two days from now. So he's like, okay. He hangs up, books this lunch. I drive two hours out of the city to London, Ontario. I meet this guy in a deli. Uh, we sit down. Uh, nice gentleman. First thing he says to me is, I know you're interested in purchasing my watch. It's not for sale. So I'm like, okay, well, that's uh, fair. I guess you could have told me over the phone, but uh, I get it. You know, I've never seen an example of this watch before. Can I just, can I see it? Can I touch it? Can I be alone with it for five minutes? You know, <laughs> you know, like I just, I need to, I need to touch this thing. So I said, sure. He goes, you know, it's been sitting in my safety deposit box for the last uh, 25 years. So I'm like, what? I'm like, why, why would it be in your safety deposit box? So I said, well, it's an investment. So I said, wait a sec. You've got no emotional attachment to this watch whatsoever? He's like, no. I'm like, is just an investment for you? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to get my guys from Sotheby's down here within the next week or two to give you a proper fair market appraisal of what this watch is worth today. I'll pay for this watch in gold, right? Gold will far surpass an investment opportunity you have of a mechanical movement in a damp <laughs> safety deposit box in a, in a bank, right? So it's like, sure. it's like okay. Yeah, so he, 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 he was interested at least hearing the appraisal. Went down, they appraised it, um, and uh, he, he said, okay, I'll, 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 uh, I'll sell it to you. So I'm like, great. I go, I love this. Um, so this, my, my son's six months old at this point. I go, this is for his 21st birthday. Um, as provenance to this watch, and I love provenance to anything I collect, uh, can you write my son a letter just for who you are, how you found the watch, what you liked about the watch? And I'll present it to him on his 21st birthday as provenance. 
needless to say, he, he agrees to, to do this. Um, and he sends me a letter a week later. Now, keep in mind, I thought he was going to write on like a yellow sticky, right? Like, my name is Rob. I like watches. You know, don't, don't scratch a kid, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, writes a letter that's... I mean, it was better than my wedding speech. I mean, it was so poetic and beautiful. And you would never know by meeting this guy. I mean, he owns a trucking company. Uh, but but, but the, the, <laughs> the, the brilliance that came out of this letter was just mind-blowing. In fact, uh, once I received it, I posted it on some of the watch forums. It got picked up by, I think, every watch magazine internationally, uh, not to mention forums. Uh, uh, um, and it was, it was picked up everywhere. Um, so I, I, you have, you have the, the letter, obviously, Andy, um, yeah. maybe you could, you could post a, a link for people to read it. Uh, you know, I, I hesitate to read it, uh, over the podcast. Uh, I think it's something people really have to sit down and, and, and read in their own voice. Uh, although I'm happy to, if you want me to. No, we'll, uh, we'll link that up. It's, it's, it's quite the letter. So we'll, um. It's something it's else. I mean, it's just, it's, yeah, it's, really, it's really cool. It's, it's mind blowing. You know, I thought I was going to have to get a ghostwriter for, you know, my other son's watch. <laughs> like what, you know, what am I going to do? But, um, but what happened was, uh, I, I, you know, I don't want to jinx it because uh, it, the, the, the fact that that letter got so much uh, press and, um, and traction, uh, it led me to another watch um, that will be, uh, uh-huh. that I'll have in two years from now. But I don't want to jinx it. It'll be another unbelievable story. Okay. Really? Okay. We'll tune okay. back in yeah, in cool. two years' time. Let us know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You'll hear about it. I promise you. Andy, can we just take a break? I need a refill. What are you drinking, Felix? It's your classic filter roast from our new coffee sponsor, Inglewood Coffee Roasters. Beverage sponsor, Felix. We have made it. Hey, I've got a cheeky Jürgen Chef filter on the go at the moment. Ethiopian bean with some light floral notes. It's mine daily, and I can't get enough. Well, Felix, I'm actually punching out another double espresso using their Colombian Spirit of Peace Espresso Roast Blend. It's sweet and biscuity. So here's the deal. Use OT30, that's OT30, for 30% off your order at checkout. On top of that, Inglewood Coffee Roasters offer free shipping on all Victorian orders and Australia-wide when you spend more than $50. Head to inglewoodcoffeeroasters.com.au to place an order today. We'll link that up. OT the podcast, fueled by Inglewood Coffee Roasters. My next question is, so you've got a bunch uh, of very lovely sounding watches. What do you actually wear on your wrist the most, like day to day? All my watches get wrist time. So it, 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 it depends on the month. It depends on the... On, on the but, but, but literally every single watch of mine... Uh, gets wrist. Right now, I'm wearing um, a Hoyer uh, Montreal white face. Ooh, nice. That um, this the, so so when I, when I first started kind of getting into watches, one of my college roommates um, was collecting watches. So I'm like, why why are you wasting mm-hmm. your money on this on this kind of thing? Like it's 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 silly, right? And he's like, no, let me show you what 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 what, what some cool watches look like. And he showed me. He took me to this website. And he had this eye on this vintage Hoyer, this white face Hoyer. And uh, I said, wow, that's, that, that's beautiful. Uh, you know, uh, are you going to get it? And he's like, you know, I'm looking at it. I'm not sure. So anyways, I checked back on the website like three to four months later. And it was still on it. So I bought it. Uh, mm-hmm. And not an hour after I bought it, he calls me and he said, he said, well, I can't believe it. That watch sold. I'm like, I, what? I bought it. What are you talking about? <laughs> He's like, what? I can't believe you bought it from under me. You know, I, I showed it to you. I'm like, under you? This is like four months later. I'm like, listen, I've got no attachment to it. I'll, I'll just have it sent to you, right? Like, it, it doesn't mean that much to me. So he, so he, he, he owned that watch. Um, in any event, he was diagnosed with uh, late stage four inoperable lung cancer. Uh, so we all went to uh, Amsterdam to kind of figure out what uh, the lot. He was given three years to live. What we so we put together a bucket list of his three years, but when we were in Amsterdam, you know, I was admiring his watch. I said, you know, it's so great to see you wear it. And say, you know, Dan, mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm willing this to you anyways when I die, which is going to happen inevitably. Uh, you take it back. You, you you have it from here on in. So uh, so that's a watch uh, I wear um, and, and have some fond memories too. Wow. So I, I I make sure that that dons my wrist at least for a couple of days a month. Huh. That's well. Special. Let's say um. Yeah. Very special. Sorry, I'm sorry for your loss. Um, obviously, that's uh, 
a, a lovely sort of piece, I guess, to to have in the collection and a nice memory yeah. as well. You know, I I think it's a shame, you know, um, h- how often people tend to flip watches. Um, mm. You know, they they almost lose their meaning if they're just kind of temporary in your collection. You know, like I that that's what I love about my art. You know, is that um, you know I was at one of my watch dealers one day. And um, he's got this bucket of watch parts. I'm like, what is that? And he's like, it's my garbage. So I'm like, what? I'm like, can I have it? And he's like, yeah. So I took it home and um, I started making uh, cufflinks out of it. Um, and, and, and one thing led to another and I started making bigger things. But, you know, I, I, I looked at this pile of watch parts and I thought, like, I can't believe that, you know, the, 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 the you know, I, I think of watches and, and people have worn them to their weddings, to their anniversaries, to the birth of their kids, to their first job interview. And, and now, you know, there some of these are off to the, the, the junkyard. Right. Mm. Uh, so mm. I love the idea of bringing, you know, breathing new life to them. Right. Like, you know, I, I, I find, you know, these these old watches with like engraving on the back to my husband of 50 years or whatever. And like, how did these end up in the garbage? Right. Um, but but the more stories I hear from the, the these junk piles I get, you know, uh, the more I, I understand, you know, how 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 they come to me. You know, I think a lot of people inherit, you know, uh, their grandparents' watches, for instance, and and they want to wear it, and they take it to a watchmaker, and it'll cost them four hundred dollars, you know, to get it up and running to be a three hundred dollar watch, right? Yeah, yeah. So they just end up trashing it, and it's a shame. And, and the nice thing is, is no matter how beat up these watches are with water damage or whatever, when you open that back, you know, it's, it, it's like cracking a beer. It's like, you know, and it's like, a, it's, it's like mint, right? It's like mm-hmm. pristine back there. Um, and, and, and inside some of these, you know, especially pocket watches, they're gorgeous inside, right? Uh, like engraved and beautiful, like uh, and expressive. So, Mm. Uh, I love being able to kind of reuse these pieces in, in art that just, you know, let these pieces live on. Well, I guess we've just got the origin story, which was the, uh, the next question we had lined up. And that was sort of, how did this, how did this whole art thing come about? I know you have an art background um, prior to sort of becoming a, a sort of techie entrepreneur type. Yeah. So, uh, so that's, great. that's great to know. Yeah. Well, um, I was an art director in advertising yeah. for a while and um, and then you know, as an art director and advertise, I don't know how it works over there, but if you're 30 in that industry over here, you're, they look at you like you should be drinking prune juice and like have a, wa- a walker, right? Like it's, <laughs> you're old. So in my early to mid 20s, I thought, okay, like what am I going to do after this, right? So uh, I was lucky enough to to start some uh, great tech companies, uh, build them and sell them. Uh, so I, mm-hmm. I, I became some somewhat of a tech entrepreneur. But while I was doing that, I kind of felt my creative spirit dying. Like I wasn't accessing it, right? So, you know, while I was looking for something to do, and, and also on the on the flip side, I don't require much sleep. So I'm I'm up quite late at night. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, I needed, I needed something to do uh, on the creative side. And with my love of watches and, and that, you know, stumbling into those buckets of watch parts, it was it was a nice transition. It really helped me express my creative spirit that I just I needed to tap into. Amazing, amazing. And so we've started talking about your artwork. Obviously, your Instagram handle, uh, the back of watch parts. It is it is to to paint a visual picture. It's artwork using and integrating watch movements and watch parts and cases and dials. From my memory, I think I've been following you for as long as I've had Instagram because it was one of those. Oh, this is kind of this is pretty cool. One of these. Um, you know, these little sort of motorcycles made out of, uh, you know, sort of cogs. two watch styles yep. as the wheels and cogs and, you know, little sort of Terminator style men riding them. And it has come a long way, sort of, I don't know, in the eight years or something that I've yeah. probably been been interested in this stuff uh, to the point where you're doing things like helmets, shoes, sneakers. Um, it's almost like uh, your, your, your gem setting, but using watch parts to sort of... Uh, customize all of these really cool different objects how how has your art sort of evolved over the years in your own opinion 
Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I mean, my handle, Watch Parts Motorcycles, uh, I mean, I always thought I would just be doing motorcycles, which is weird because I'm just, you know, some Jewish kid from Forest Hill here in Toronto. My mommy would never let me drive a motorcycle, right? Like, <laughs> I've, I've, I've never even been on one, right? But um, when I was looking to kind of evolve my artwork from the cufflinks, you know, the biggest part of a, of a watch is the, uh, the case or the bezel or the dial even. Yep. And they just, you know, look like wheels to me. So um, one thing led to another. I started making motorcycles, um, knowing nothing about motorcycles. Uh, so what I did was I started a Facebook page, actually, for my watch parts motorcycles, just to kind of get the community out there, to, you know, like, oh, you know, you put the exhaust on the left side, it should be on the right side. And, you know, that's not a V-twin engine, <laughs> you got to put this. And so, you know, while I'm sure I could have Google searched, you know, how to, you know, make the, the, the right motorcycle, the nice thing about motorcycles is as long as it has two wheels, an engine, a gas tank, and handlebars, you can do whatever you want, right? Like, yeah, you know, a you can, yeah. you know there's, it's a motorcycle, right? So, so really, you could, you could really be creative. So I, I was really excited about that prospect that, you know, I wasn't just spitting out the same motorcycle. Uh, to, uh, you know, over and over again. I was really, I was getting like really uh, uh, long, you know, forks to it and huge exhaust, and uh, and I was doing, I was doing motorcycles exclusively for like five years, um, and then I was approached by um, Kid Robot um, or or someone mm-hmm. associated with Kid Robot, um, and they said, you know, we'd like to do a limited art series um, with you and and our Dunnies. So I'd never, I never even heard of the Dunnies or or anything like any of these vinyl characters. I, had, I mean, had had you heard of any of this before you saw my stuff? No, to be honest, it was your work that sort of led me down that path. Yeah, like I, I, I was oblivious to it. But there's an amazing store here in Toronto called Toronto Collective that sells, you know, all these vinyl figures. Uh, so I went down there and just kind of parked myself there for a week just to kind of get a feel for who buys this stuff, what what is this stuff. So anyways, I, I contacted this person associated with Kid Robot. I said, are you sure they want me? I mean, this stuff is like light and fluffy and like happy. And like uh, my stuff is like steampunk, heavy and metal. And like it's mm. totally opposite to everything I think they stand for. And he's like, no, they're, they're interested. So I'm like, okay. So I did, uh, I did 30 pieces. And this was really mm. my first time encrusting anything, right? So I did around 30 pieces. They sold out in like under 10 minutes. No way. I was way. like, holy smokes. Yeah, it was crazy. I'm like, wow, this is this is cool, right? Uh, that being said, like I can't make, I, I, I just, I can't make these in, in, in mass, right? It's not like mm. I can spit out a hundred of these pieces. It just takes so much time. It's like, it's, it, it's really, like every time I make a piece, I'm like, I'm never going to sell this, right? Like this is like amazing. And then when I'm done it, I'm like, okay, the, uh, I'm selling this. Um, but, but that really, that, that whole kid robot phenomena, uh, made me just want to encrust bigger things, right? Like, uh, the, the motorcycles cap out at around six inches by like three inches, right? Like mm. if you think of the case being a tire, right, there's only so big it could be, right? So I just, I love the concept of encrusting things and I just went nutsy with it, right? I started <laughs> encrusted skulls and animal skulls and guns and, uh, helmets and uh you know just iconic imagery right like uh whatever i could whatever had like a unique shape right like an absolute bottle or a jack daniels bottle uh all that kind of stuff i just started encrusting and i just i i i love it i i, I think it's it, it's great because you know you see these pieces and like the more you look at them the more you see different things you know um so it's it's pretty cool i i, I really like doing it so Dan, I've got a question. As your sort of art grew in scale, that original bucket of watch parts must have run out pretty quickly. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, it, 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 certain, it certainly did. Where do you where do you source uh, all these broken up movements and stuff? That that must be a major challenge in what you do. Uh, I mean, you would think it is. It, it actually isn't. You know, I, 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 like I said, I've been a collector all my life. So I, I continue to go to antique stores and flea markets and estate sales. And, and inevitably, there's always a bucket of these parts tucked away somewhere. So mm. um, and, and also, you know, I, I, I frequent a lot of the, uh, the watchmakers uh, in town. 
Um, like this is literally their garbage, right? Uh, mm-hmm. and, and I'm giving them money for it, right? So it's like a dream come true for them. It's sure. a win-win. Um, it, it, and, and people, you know, at this point now call me up and say, I've got a bunch of watches. I, I, I you know, I typically turn them down now because uh, I have a lot of watches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a quick sort of follow up. Do you do anything with the parts? Like, do you clean them or sort of ultrasonic bath them or treat no, I don't them in any way? Any of them. I don't. I don't. I, I love the patina on them, so I, I don't clean them. Um, and and I try not to manipulate them as as much as I can. Like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll cut the odd one to kind of fit somewhere uh, or file it down. But other than that, I don't. I don't manipulate the pieces too much, hmm. um, or at least I try not to, because otherwise, like. Um, like there's, there's certain motorcycles um, that have a lot of flaring on the side, like these sport bikes. Mm. Um, and uh, I've gotten a lot of requests for them. But the, the truth is, is with the flaring on the side, I end up kind of melding the watch parts together. Um, and, and at that point, it just becomes metal art, right? And uh, mm. you lose the integrity mm. of the piece. So, um, you know, I, 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 tr- I turn down probably more work than I actually take on. Um, because, you know, I, I, I don't want, again, I don't want to do the same thing over and over again. So, uh, unless, unless the piece, uh, has either a story behind it, or I could really express myself or do something really cool, I just won't do it. (laughs) Yeah. Really interesting. So what I want to know, given that you sort of, and when we talk about encrusting, you use like hundreds of movements. So I'm curious about Thousands, yeah, thousands. It's it's remarkable. What I'm curious about is, have you learned any sort of random watch knowledge along the way, like opening up on mass all of these, you know, vintage old watch watches and watch parts? Like, is this just like any random sort of thing you've picked up, or you've discovered a cool brand that no one's really heard of? It's so funny. I mean, do you think I would I would be able to put a watch together? I I, I literally cannot. I mean, I know the names of the parts that I'm using now. Um, and uh-huh. it's funny. It's funny because I was using uh, this really cool pocket watch balance cocks for um, for a wheel for a motorcycle, but I needed a bunch of them. So um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm googling and I'm looking up all these balance cocks. And I thought, oh my god, if my wife comes and looks at my Google history and sees me looking for cocks, you know, I, I think I'm gonna. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to explain to her what exactly what I'm, you know, doing here. You know, I pulled her aside. I'm like, listen, just in case, I don't know if you ever checked my <laughs> Google history, but I was looking for balance cocks, right? Which is an actual thing, I promise you. Nothing to be alarmed about. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, yeah, right, exactly. Um, so, so I, I mean, I, I've learned what some of the terms are, but but I, I have no idea how to put one together. Yeah, very cool, very cool. All right, so. We've talked about the helmets, the shoes, the sneakers, but what have you been working on lately? I've been working on a few things lately. So there's one guy um, who's who's got an unbelievable collection of my work, um, and he is now a um, music producer, and asked me to do stuff for a music video. So I don't know oh, if cool. you saw if you saw the guns that I did. Yeah, um, I, I kind of. I posted them, but it's it's a tough time to post gun stuff, right? So sure. I didn't want to look like one of those, you know, gun loving guys. Uh, and I got a lot of hate for uh, posting it. Not a lot. I got some hate for posting it, but uh, so I did. I, it's for a music video. So uh, those guns I did. But um, can you say who? Can you say who for? I, I, I can't. <laughs> okay. okay. When's um, it come out? It, it comes out uh, in two months. Um, but I did do some pieces for Chief Keef. I don't know if you know this rapper. Uh, I did. That, I saw. Yeah, that 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 was really cool. Um, but right now, what I'm doing is I don't know if you've seen that. I kind of hide my artwork in the city sometimes mm-hmm. and, and put like hints around. Uh, well, I used to travel a ton for my work. Like literally, I was I was probably in a different four different cities a month. Uh, but but overnight, like uh, quick trips. But I, I would typically be going solo. So what I used to do is I'd take a piece of mine, I'd hide it while I'm at lunch across the street and see if mm-hmm. someone found it, whatever. It was lots of fun. But during COVID, I haven't been able to travel. So what I'm doing now is I'm working on uh, a series that I'm going to send out to people in various cities. They'll get to, I'm sending two pieces. They'll keep one piece and they'll hide mm-hmm. the other piece and they'll hide the other piece in their city. So uh, I think that'll be, uh, that'll be fun to kind of do. That's awesome. Yeah, awesome. I did say that. 
we should uh, let us know if there's any coming down to Melbourne. I would do it. Uh, listen, yeah. why, why not? Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Well, the only problem yeah. is at the moment, uh, whoever it is can only hide it within five kilometres of their house. <laughs> right. uh, I guess, Felix, you and I will have to have one each. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, look, I think this is – you've obviously worked ac- across a range of sort of uh, – disciplines isn't quite the, quite the word, but you've done one thing across a, a broad range of objects and it's not you, – you haven't sort of – being put into one, uh, you're not just doing motorcycles over and over and over again. You're doing a yeah. whole range of cool things. What are you most proud of? Um, you know, I did uh, a 20 inch Dunny. I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm 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 pretty proud of that. Just uh, it was the first time. I, I always thought that all my stuff had to be small. Like when I was doing the motorcycles, I was doing a couple other things of that size. And I just didn't know if it lended itself to anything bigger than that. Uh, So when I did that 20-inch Dunny, uh, I I was really proud of just how it turned out, the sheer weight of it. I mean, it's like 25 pounds. Uh, And the uh, the eyes are a speedometer and a clock from a 1948 Chevy. Um, So so I I just, I I, I love that piece that, that it was my my real transition into, okay, you know what? I could do, I could do kind of bigger stuff. Awesome. All right. So obviously we want to, uh, to support you, Dan. How long does this stuff take? How much does it cost? How do we buy some? So it, it's always a tricky question because uh, it, it really depends on the size and the intricacies of the build. So uh, mo- most of my builds take around 50 to 100 hours to make. Cool. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and so what I do is I consult with someone, right? Like if someone wants to a piece of mine, you know, a lot of times this is how the sneakers came about. Someone came to me and said, Oh, you know, I love um, the skulls that you did. I love a skull. And this was like an 18 year old kid. So I'm like, Scott, you really like skulls? And he's like, well, I, I mean, I like, I like how it turned out, but, uh, you know, uh, I just, I just want a piece of yours. So I said, well, like, what else do you collect? What do you do? So it turns out this kid was like a major sneakerhead. So I said, well, why don't I try encrusting a, an Air Jordan, see if, it, see if it looks good, and you could have that. And he was like, ah, wicked. So, um, you know, we worked out kind of what his budget was and, you know, how, how much it would really cost for me to do it. Uh, and he did it. So, my like, the starter piece of mine costs around six fifty U.S. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it goes upwards to, you know, 10, 15 grand, depending on, you know, so, some of the, the bigger things. But like, uh, you know, I work backwards from someone's budget. You know, I don't, I don't want someone not to have a piece of mine because they can't afford it. So if someone has a budget that I could work, you know, a realistic one that I could work within, um, I'll, I'll do it. Amazing. Yeah. So which piece in particular speaks to you guys that you've seen of mine? I'm going to go first, Felix. You did, you did something for, uh, I think it was for Richard and it was like a, the, the PB jar. Yeah, with watch butts in it. I remember seeing that and being like, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, you know, I was experimenting with resin. I don't know if you saw my mm. Watch Addict series where I, I saw that. that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, resin's a it's, a, it's a difficult animal. I mean, it's so hard to work with. Um, but, but being able to put things in a jar and putting resin was a little easier. Uh, PB is a friend of mine. Um, mm. he, he's a, 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 a great guy and uh, he wanted a piece. And again, this was, you know, one of these things where he was like, you know, can you make me a motorcycle? I'm like, why motorcycle? You know, let me do something that's relevant to you. So I found a, uh, a vintage, you know, peanut butter jar and uh, filled it with clock parts uh, strategically and then mm. uh, in, in, encapsulated it with resin and it looked wicked. I also love the skulls, I got to say. I do, because you did resin skulls too, right? I did resin skulls, but you know, yeah. I don't know if you've seen the uh, animal skulls I've done. I get these wicked yes, animals. Have. Yeah, they're so cool because I keep the integrity of the um, the horns, and I encrust the skulls, and they look really wicked. Uh, I mean, they, they turn out really awesome. I think getting into uh, Felix's undergraduate art criticism uh, moment. <laughs> <laughs> what I like, uh, what I like the most, is the ones that aren't mechanical in original nature. So, like, the motorbikes and the guns and, uh, you know, anything that is a machine 
already. I'm like, oh yeah, you've made a machine out of different things. That's cool. Right. What what I really like is when you're doing like the shoes or the food out of out yeah. of machines. That for me like really gets my head going. Hang on, what? Um, and I, that's that's what that's I'm interested. interesting. Yeah. So, but what I was yeah. going to ask is, I'm I want to know is. Is there one movement, I guess you won't know the name of it, but it looks like there's these little manually wound like ladies watch movements that look to be like the building blocks that you, like those little classic Lego bricks that are, um, yeah. how do you get so many of them? So <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> so, um, you know, when I first started in Creston, I was just, I, I was just putting piece, pieces together. It was like a, a puzzle that had no you know, picture to it that you just had to put together. And those would take me weeks, if not months to put together small pieces. Mm. So um, I came up with a new strategy where um, I'm going to try to find um, a, a base, like you called it, of, uh, of watch parts, and then maybe fill the gaps in while keeping the integrity of this kind of steampunky look. Mm. So I found a guy in the Ukraine uh, who would send me like a thousand of these at once. <laughs> Uh, so I've got him on speed dial, um, and he's, uh, he's in heaven because, you know, he used to sell 20 at a time and now, you know, I'll call for an order of 5,000 of them. Um, so he's, you know, sitting by his computer waiting for my call every month. Yeah. Nice. I love that. I love that. Uh, that's really cool. So you mentioned Chief Keith, you've done, you've done work over the years for Paul Senior from Orange County Choppers and- For the guys from uh, American Pickers, uh, both right. you know two sh- two shows that I love to uh, I love to enjoy on a Sunday. Uh, I want to know about Chief Keith though. How did that come about? What did you What did you do for him? So um, it's funny, you know, two totally different worlds. Him and I, um, and, and I must say, he's a very um, unaffected. He's a big deal. Uh, uh, generous, um, great person uh, to have, to have worked with. Um, but, you know, I'm not uh, a big rap guy. So um, when I heard there was an opportunity for Chief Keith to have a few of my pieces, uh, you know, I, I, I really had to look it up and kind of, you know, see who he was. Um, and he, he's got a very interesting story behind him. Um, but it, it came about where uh, a friend of his, uh, a friend of his mother, likes my work on Instagram. She contacted me and she said, you know, my son could get you in with Chief Keith. So I said, well, who's, who is that? Uh, she said, look him up. Right. So I looked him up I'm like, well, uh, this guy is a big deal. So um, she connected me to her son who connected me to uh, Chief Keith. And uh, he has, uh, I think three or four of my pieces. Amazing. Yeah. It's cool. And, and he was, he had uh, a lot of t- time for me. He, uh, we communicated uh, quite a bit together, and uh, uh, it was it was very cool. Uh, I don't know if you're. Are, are, do you guys get Howard Stern uh, over there? Yeah. So you know, uh, you know Ralph. Um, he's, uh-huh. Yeah, he's he's got a piece of mine. Um, very cool. Yeah, I've got I've got kind of um, like I shouldn't say B list, but like people also who are famous that are kind of behind the scenes. Um, you know the Umbrella Academy. Oh, yeah. Yes. So uh, w- w- yeah, one of my, my so my uh, the showrunner has a few of my pieces, uh, and in fact, in uh, in the first season, I think it's episode six or something, um, the the father has a curio cabinet, uh, and very uh, briefly you can see one of my motorcycles in it. That's cool. That's right. I remember that. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It's it, you know there's, there's some, it's it's cool. It's it's cool when, it, when, when, when things like that happen. That being said, um, uh, you know, while it's very, um, it's, it's a huge honor to kind of have my pieces with, uh, you know, a, a, any celebrity, um, the, 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 there's lots of great um, stories behind the, uh, the pieces I've made for people around the globe. Yeah, sure, of course. Yeah. Which, which leads me to... Uh... What what do people want the most? What is your most sort of popular request or commission? Well, I mean, it was motorcycles forever. Um, mm-hmm. I've I've, tr- I've turned down a lot of motorcycle stuff recently. Um, just I, I I had a little fatigue with just making them. I just uh, I, I, yeah, I, couldn't, sure. I couldn't get motivated. Um, but I, I I get a lot of um, uh, 
cause and and Dunny uh, requests. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know those cause pieces I do with the um, yeah, 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 yeah. I I, got, I can I, 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 I can say that. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're they're very popular. But again, when someone contacts me and says, "Yeah, I want cause or Dunny," uh, I I often just kind of try to get out of them what what perhaps they collect or or, or they're excited about because. Uh, I'd like to try something new and I'd like to encrust something that's more meaningful to them. Um, you know, a lot of times people say, oh, you know, I've got my grandfather's watch. Can you turn it into a motorcycle or something? And what people don't understand is, you know, there's probably 40 different watches that went into that one motorcycle. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you think about it, if you think about the wheels, um, each, each having two uh, watch cases, I mean, that's four watches just in the wheels, right? Mm-hmm. Not, not including what goes inside of them. Um, but I have incorporated a, a watch of, of people's, you know, for sentimental value within a build. But you know, it, 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 I can't just do one piece with a with one watch. Yeah, amazing. So, what watch art is? It's it's fascinating because it's become a whole sort of category of art, given the, the yeah. large kind of collector and enthusiast base. I want to know who else in the uh, let's call it watch art or timepiece art space that you're a fan of oh well there's there's one person in particular her name is sue beatrice um i believe Uh her her handles all natural arts she is the queen i mean she is the master um she does spectacular art in in a much smaller scale like within a um a pocket watch typically but uh she Mm -hmm. does amazing stuff um justin gershon um at uh a mechanical um a mechanical damn it something um he's unbelievable well, he, he, he he he's the one who makes my little robot guys that i do the stop motion with oh cool cool cool, cool. Um, yeah well we'll link them he's, up he's in the show notes as well, we'll, we'll uh, those two come to out. mind um as kind of top of their game um but you know I, i've been inspired by many different uh artists yeah you know, I, I i love instagram uh, in the sense that I've met some really talented, crazy artists out there. Freehand Profit is a guy who does these masks out of sneakers. I don't know if you've seen mm-hmm. this stuff. Um, there, there's some incredible talent out there that I've just I've bumped into that really inspire me. We should shout out uh, a fellow Canadian, Julie Corrales, as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I listen, the, there's the, the talent out there is is. is limitless um yeah I, you know the 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 difference is is that this is a hobby for me um mm-hmm. I, I you know i make i make good money out of it i love doing it um but you know i i tip my hat to artists who, who do it for a living i mean that that's a grind man that's that's not that's not an easy way to make a living yeah amazing all right let's uh let's switch gears we've made note of all of those um great artists and we'll link them all up the uh, the other week you posted your proposal video from like 20 years ago and right. I love it. I love, I love, there's like this whole uh, segment on the internet that's like dedicated to proposal videos, but I reckon you were ahead of the curve. Um, I, was. I was indeed. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It was. It's, Felix, it's, it's you haven't heard it, but it's. It's the it, ad director thing, you know, he had the vision. He had yeah, the oh, man. I'm so, <laughs> listen up, Felix, listen up, listen up. So, so I'm going to explain it as best I can to you, but it was the, the classic movie theater, but this is genuinely, well, I think, 20 years ago. It's for your 20th anniversary, I'll, right? I'll, I'll work backwards for you. Um, so right. I, like you said, Felix, I was an art director. So it was literally mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. job to come up with mm-hmm. ideas for things like this. So I, I came yeah. up with a solid 10, 15 ideas that I loved for this proposal. Um, and one of them was to be to, to do it as a movie trailer, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I went to a couple of these uh, movie houses to explain my idea. And and back then it wasn't digital. It was it was thirty it was thirty five millimeter, right? Yeah, sure. So mm-hmm. uh, so so I said, you know, can I do it? And they said, yeah, sure, kid. You know, if you want to shoot it on thirty five millimeter, drop sound and and everything, you know, have at it. So you know, at the time, that's what we were shooting uh, commercials on, anyways. So at the end of the commercial, I tacked on my proposal um, video, which was basically it was it was me in a tuxedo, shot from the chin down. And I, and, I, and I walk into the scene uh, and, and I kind of fumble with my, my, my tie and I 
clear my voice and I, I walk forward and I kneel down revealing that it's me and I propose to um, my girlfriend at the time. Um, so so uh, I had booked a, a place that I was going to do it um, and I was going to sneak her family and my family in the back and it was going to be a whole to do. And um, the movie I was going to do it was at American Pie, right? That, that was the <laughs> that was the movie at the time. And um, and uh, after I have it all set up, my wife tells me she wants, or my wife, my, my girlfriend at the time tells me, um, you know, she wants to see this new movie that's come out called An Ideal Husband. So immediately I say, forget it. There's no way I'm going to. And then I was like, wait a second, what's it called? She's like, The Ideal Husband. So, I'm like, ah, okay. <laughs> so I, I call the movie theater and uh, arrange for it to be shown at that movie. Right. I make her take me there like kicking and screaming. Right. Like, nice. Nice. Uh, yeah. Ham it up. Um, yeah. So so uh, so we go there uh, and, and and one of the, the ways that I, that I was able to get all this done for free is that um, the press would be there. Right. So I said, OK, after after I take a knee, uh, you could come down with their cameras and interview us and do whatever. So, uh, so we're sitting at, at this 1130 on a Thursday or 1030 on a Thursday, you know, with like uh, the two of us and like single women everywhere. Um, nice. Anyways, the, the thing comes up here. I, I come on the screen. I think, you know, um, Kim's going to say, oh, look, it's a new James Bond movie or whatever, or Steve Martin or whatever. Uh, she sees my face, you know, as I kneel down. And of course, I'm kneeled down beside her at the time. Also, my, my knees stuck on the on the sticky ground, and I'm proposing to her. Uh, and then my family, her family, all jump up, and you know the, the cameras come down. And then as soon as everything dies down, this lady who's like three rows in front of us yells out, "Oh, thanks!" As if I didn't feel single enough, you know. <laughs> like nice. it, it was, uh, <laughs> it was uh, um, but but yeah. So you know, I, I I try to be creative in every aspect of my life. Um, and you know, the, of course, then I, I was young and, uh, I, I, I of cool. course, you know, I told her this, this is, this is, you know, everything's downhill from here, right? Like this is my, the, I, I've peaked right now, right? Like yeah. that, I, I, get, I, yeah. I've <laughs> never met you, but I agree. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could well, I, uh, hold on. It hasn't peaked because you also do those really cool family portraits for like, uh, Halloween, yeah. and I think you do like Christmas cards. We got to link this stuff up because it's just like the it, you, when you say you you approach this stuff, everything in your life creatively, you do. I love it. I love seeing sort of the the familyness. Oh, yeah, I like to have fun. I like to involve the family. Like my uh, my son, my eleven year old son, it turns twelve coming up. Uh, he he's gotten into um, uh, custom sh- uh, sneaker design. Um, I don't know if you've seen his page uh, at Soul Prodigy twenty three. Uh, but he's doing like he's getting more commissions than I am now. It's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, cool. So so we'll link uh, him up as well. I think what, what, so he does sneaker. Just describe to us what he's doing in. Uh, so so, so pe- people will send him a like a Air Force One, a white Air Force One. And then he'll consult with them, like, you know, what colors do you like and whatever. And then he'll do some designs. They'll pick a design and then he'll paint it up and, uh, and, and make it look wicked. Like, it's, it's, it's very cool what he does. I'm just going to make a, a throwaway comment about uh, maybe an ideal husband being a better choice in the long run than American Pie um, in terms of associating family memories. But uh, yeah. while, we're, while we're talking about, uh, you know, sort of recommending Instagram accounts, uh, maybe, you know, proposal suggestions, movies, all that stuff, do you have any recommendations for people listening that you've been maybe enjoying while we've spent more time at home than normal? You know, I, I, I've been, I've been, I, I watch the junkiest TV like uh, ever. Like, like I'm a, like a bachelor watcher. Uh, yes. Like I like not thinking when I watch this kind of stuff. Uh, that being said, I've gotten into every show. I got into Love Sick, which I loved. Um, mm. I got into um, Sex Education. Uh, I've, yep. I've recently just uh, finished a, a series called Younger, uh, which I which Classic. I really enjoyed. Very uh, good. Yeah, like uh, there, there's there's so many great shows out there uh, that I, that I've been binging and loving. Um, but my, my, my daughter's 14. So we, um, initially started getting her into some of the classic, uh, movies, Ferris Bueller's, 
uh, mm-hmm. 16 mm-hmm. Candles. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we showed her the notebook. Uh, I got her through some of the Monty Pythons. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, comedy is a, a, a big thing for me. In fact, when I was um, on the dating scene, you know, 25 years ago, one of my first questions was always, tell me your top five movie comedies of all time. And that would determine to me whether we're going for a beer or like a fancy dinner, right? Like that, like that, that really kind of gave me the perspective I needed on who this person was. Oh, that's a good question. Andy, can you tell us your top, let's say you go top three movie comedies of all time and I'll do one or two and Dan can see what sort of date he's going to take us on. <laughs> yeah, what I, I have perfect. to do three bits. Uh, you have to, okay. uh, <laughs> You're funnier than I am. I, 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 I love, I do love uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That's probably my favourite all-time film, not just comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, what else? I, I, that's I've got, just my, I've, that's I've, my go-to favourite film. Well, my favourite guilty pleasure romantic comedy is a terrible movie called Down With Love with Renee Zellweger and Ewan McGregor set in the 50s. Uh, it's very tacky. Great I love Notting Hill as well. Ooh, I Notting think Notting Hill's good. a yep, great yep, one to yep. watch. Yeah, any Richard uh, Curtis is fairly good, uh, really. And what else? I don't. I t- I t- Love Sick was amazing, actually. Love Sick, uh, in terms of like a more modern film, I think it came out last year. But that, I'm pr- I'm pretty sure I was in tears watching that film. That's mm. a very very good film. Is that enough, Dan? Sorry, Can you, you know what? what I lost all on? of it. <laughs> no, you know what? I lost everything you said. I, I literally, I, I I I didn't hear any of it. What, <laughs> just to, to give me the high level, which ones they were? Because I, I I literally lost. I lost you guys there for the, all right. the whole middle thing. All right, all right. So my 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 uh, my number one is Ferris Bueller. Uh, okay. I'm going to throw Notting Hill in uh, just okay. as a favorite rom com, and then also yeah. Love Sick more oh, recently. You know amazing. what we both love, Andy? The Vacation. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Va- yeah. So <laughs> Vacation, we're going for dinner for sure. Um, <laughs> so so what so to me, uh, uh, well, it depends on what what followed Vacation for me, uh, but we're, we're we're definitely opening up a fine wine. But like, like to me, you know, like you need like a Blues Brothers or a, a yes. Stripes or Animal House kind of vibe up there. Oh, uh, it, okay. it, it, it would be nice to have a Monty Python in the mix if you can. Uh, I'd um, go dirty, rot- dirty Rotten Scoundrels then. Perfect. Yeah, it's great to have a Steve Martin in there. You know, like uh, anything from from Dirty Rotten Scoundrels to you know. I, I like when you could do like something like um, planes, trains, and automobiles, just to get a little John Candy in there. Um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, so, so yeah, Woody Allen's acceptable to uh, in in some circles. Uh, I, I kind of appreciate his movies also, kind of in that mix. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, the Caddyshacks, the Fletches, the airplanes. You know, those kind of uh, mm-hmm. movies. I was you know hoping to see in there. Um, you know, Ferris Bueller. You know. It's 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 comedy ish, right? Like, um, they, they they don't make comedies like they used to, right? You know, Dumb and Dumber. You know, I loved. Um, you know, just you know, very silly kind of uh, movies like that. You know, uh, I, I I like I I like a good comedy. Like it, it's 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 plays an important factor in my life. Love that. What a note to end on. All righty, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> Everyone, make sure you go check out Watch Part Motorcycles on Instagram. Uh, get in touch with Dan if you can if he can help you with the commission or you want to pick up something special just in time for Christmas. Dan, thank you so much for uh, jumping on the show. Yeah, thanks uh, for making the time. It's been great to have you. It's been a, it's yeah, been it's a pleasure. Treat. You uh, like uh, I'm not a uh, podcast virgin anymore. This was uh, this was great. Thanks for for having me. Nice. No, it's been our pleasure. Awesome, guys. Thanks again. Have a great day. You too, mate. There we go. Dan is, as they're fond of saying, the man. Um, what an artist, what a talent, what a genuinely nice guy, Andy. That was a uh, transforming and revelatory 30 or 40 minutes <laughs> of my life. At least. Yeah, great least. guy. We'll link that up. And, and as always, make sure you're using uh, using OT30 with Inglewood, Inglewood Coffee Roasters. Mm-hmm, support mm-hmm. our sponsors. Support us. Head to Gucci.com. Uh, Gucci. Check out the grips. Yeah. Yeah. Get some get some Xmas treats and always 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 major social media big thank you. Uh, follow us on Instagram ot dot podcast. Mm-hmm. Email us and Felix will personally answer <laughs> ot the podcast at gmail dot Within the next financial year, yeah, within the next ninety days, uh, we will see you guys next time. Let's do it.